Hello, Martin, how are you? Uh, good, thanks, how are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Thank you for joining us and uh, welcome to Millwall Fan TV. Thank you for having me, my pleasure. That's okay, so just going to get on with 10 questions. Uh, let's get straight into it. So, first question, what was your favourite moment whilst at Millwall? Um, probably staying up um, that season when we did in, in the way that we did it. Um, we were sort of dead and buried at one point um, and then to kind of to pull it back the way that we did and then and then to, to stay up on the last last day of the season it was it was a really good moment there were a lot of relief in there it had been sort of an up and down season obviously being in a relegation battle but uh, um to to claw it back the way that we did um and then the, the relief of that game it was definitely a moment that i'll never forget in my career and also you scored the winner didn't you to stay at keep us up if, I, if i'm if i'm right I did, yes, I did. Yeah, it's um, yeah. It's always nice to chip in with the goals and and to do it on uh, in the in the games that really matter. It's it's even better. Um, but like I said, the the main thing was was to stay up and we achieved that. And it was like I said, a lot of relief at the end of that game. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, next question: Who was the best Millwall player you played with during your time at Millwall? Um, the, there's been a few to be fair I've, I've had the pleasure of playing with some really good players and some really good characters um, it's a tough one to pick one out but but for me just because of um, the, the positioning to myself on the pitch uh, and the value that it fetched to me I'd, I'd probably say Scott Malone um, we had, a, we had a, good, a good relationship down that left side and, and he, he was a player that, that always had a lot of ability um, about him and um, I, I always knew that it'd be if if I needed someone to be getting around me and overlapping, then he'd be there. And then if I needed someone to bail me out at the other end, then it'd, it'd be right behind me bailing me out. So, um, like I said, there's been many I, I could have named quite a few, but like I said, just just purely because of the relationship in, in terms of where we were on the pitch together, then I'd say Sky. Thank you very much. Uh, next question: Whilst at Millwall, obviously you played under three different managers: um, uh, Lomas, Holloway, and Harris for a short period of time. Who was your favourite and why? Um, this is a bit of a stitch up, this one, isn't it? Because I know there's only one right answer. But <laughs> for for me, um, obviously the Millwall fans are going to want me to say to say Harris. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm not going to purely for the reason that I didn't play under him for that long. You just said there it were, it were only a, a short spell. So um, to to see. In terms of, of a manager, I, I don't think there, there was kind of a long enough period there. So I, I'm going to choose between the other two, which I know both are kind of possibly wrong answers. Yeah. Uh, but um, I take it all away for me. Um, and like I say, I'm very aware that that's going to be an unpopular opinion with, with the Millwall fans. Um, but if you look back to when. Um, when Oli came in uh, that first season, and like I say, we were, we were dead and buried at that point, and, and to stay up in, in the fashion that we did, and then even even looking at the next season, we actually got off to a good start. That yeah, the wheels came off uh, and stuff like that. But, uh, um, I, I think there were a little bit of uh, unfortunate injuries. We, we lost uh, we lost Carlos Edwards at a vital time and, and the style of play that we were playing at that time, he was were, he were vital to that. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, and the other thing is, as a player looking at a manager, as, as fans looking at a manager, it's just results. It, that, that's all it is and that's all it comes down to. Football is a results-based game and granted that's what it was all about and it is getting the results but as a, as a player you see the managers you see the day in day out and, and it's sort of how they're helping you in the game and all that kind of stuff and and I've got I've got all the respect in the world for, for Ollie and it, it did a lot for me in, in terms of the, the way I was playing my game and, and, and that season um, I, I were actually in relatively good form under, under the circumstances so um, I, I, for me again I'm very aware it'll be against uh, the popular opinion, but um, it, it's all. And, and again, that might have changed if I'd have had a season under Harris. Yeah. Um, it possibly been different because um, because Chopper did a lot for me as well um, in and around the place, just just in a different role to, to the managers. And, and I got on ever so well with him. And, and again, he's, he's a he's a man that I've got uh, 
all the respect in the world for and I, I would delight to see him kind of take over and, and, and do as well as he did in the, in the manager's role because it can always be a difficult thing going from kind of legend at a club as a player it, it's it's totally different as a manager so for to see him do well in that aspect as well were, were really great and uh, like I said I, I wish I'd have had a little bit longer on the, on the chopper and that might have changed the opinion but for me because of the time scales and, and things like that it'll be Ollie. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting to hear your opinion because obviously, you know, uh, Millwall fans obviously weren't so keen on Lomas and Ollie, but it's good to see what the players think and obviously you, you liked him, so that's that's good for the fans to hear. Yeah, yeah, like I say, Ollie, Ollie's, he, I mean, in all the ways, he's, he's a character anyway and like I say, it's, when, when things are going well, then it, it's, it's, it's someone that you, you can look at and, and have a laugh with and think that when things, when things aren't going well, you, you can sort of see him as being sort of, or has he, has he lost the plot? But, but for me, he's, um, he, was, he was consistent throughout um, and, and he was really helpful um, and, and things like that. And I think under different circumstances, if, if we'd have... Um, if, if we've, we'd have been a little bit more fortunate with, with the players that were lost in vital areas, I think it could have been a totally different story because, like, as I say, you, you look at the season when it took over, um, no one would have expected us to stay up. Um, and I do put a lot of that down to him. And then, as I say, the, the following season, if you look at the start of that season, we actually started really well. Um, and like I say, in different circumstances with injuries and stuff like that, then it might have been different, but I don't know, but it's it's my opinion is is based on the things behind the scenes as, as well that that you see in day in day out as a player. So that's where I'm going with that one. Thank you. Uh, question four: um, who, um, who was the biggest character in the changing room in your middle career? Um, we had a few over my time actually. Um, again, Scott Malone was a character I got on really well with Beeves. Um, but you, we had Danny Shiro in there. You can't, you can't get a bigger character than that, both physically and uh, and uh, sort of uh, how he is. Just, just uh, such a nice guy, such a nice character. Really good leader. Um, good to have, have in the changing rooms. Um, I used to be glad I were on his side when you'd be still lining up in a tunnel and he'd be giving it up. He's, uh, he's screaming and shouting and. You can imagine it being very intimidating for the opposition. So you were a good one to have on side. Yeah, definitely. Uh, question five, obviously, going back before you came to Mill, you scored the winner for Scunthorpe in the playoff final against Millwall. Uh, when you first arrived at Mill, did you think there was going to be some animosity um, from the Millwall fans? Yeah, uh, and there was. It was sort of, it was sort of, uh, um, you've got some make it up to do, Wolford. So yeah. I was very aware. It was sort of, it, I was getting welcomed, but at the same time, it was sort of. But you better make <laughs> make it up to us. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, luckily, I mean, I, I've got. I, I still actually keep in touch with a couple of Millwall fans that, that my dad made friends with as, as we were going down there, and, and they have been more than more than welcoming to me. And by come the end of it and leaving, and um, I just think that. Uh, I did make up a little bit of that. I can imagine at the time I wasn't a very popular guy down in Millwall. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I give everything that I, that I could for, for the team. I would play that, that would just leave it all out on the pitch, um, regardless of, of how well, well I were playing. Yeah. Uh, and I think that goes a long way with the Millwall fans. I think they oh. just like to see you, you giving everything for the shit. And I'd like to think that I did that. Um, all the time over there so um, I do um, I do hope that that, that opinion uh, I did make up for, for that incident but um, but yeah I, it, there was definitely a little bit of animosity there it was it was kind of I did get welcome don't get me wrong but there was definitely a welcome but uh, yeah you always yeah <laughs> thank you very much um, question six um, how big a part does a pack den help Millwall players but also intimidate the away team. Oh, it's huge! It, it's huge. It, it's one of you, you always talk about the the twelfth man, and and that is not. There's no place in England that is more apparent than the den, yeah. where that is when you when you've got a packed den, and right from the off when you, when you're hearing that jeer of mill, and you're just stood out there as a player, you, you, you it's sort of hairs on the back of your neck stuff, and like I say. You, 
you know, and I've known from my time coming here, uh, going going down to Den as an opposing player, it was never a nice place to go. And that that is one one good thing that the, that the Millwall fans kind of managed to keep hold of that, that sort of this is a fortress like place. You're not just going to come here and um, and get away easy. Um, you, you're gonna they, they're going to be right behind me off. And when they when when everybody's sort of singing on your side, it's it's a very good good place to be playing for and a very intimidating place to be against. So it does make a hell of a lot of a difference. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, question seven. Um, Mill seems to have a habit of playing players out of position uh, during your time there. Obviously, you didn't. But um, did you find this with any other players? And, and did you find this? He tried, they tried to do the same with you? I did, actually. I did, I, if you look back at it, I did play... I, I did play games... So it changed quite a lot at Millwall. I, I, I kind of signed, um, I signed from Millwall as a out and out left sided player, um, and in particular under under Holloway, um, I did get played in a, a number of different roles. I came became more of a footballing midfielder, so I was getting played central at times. Um, I filled in at left back uh, a few times as well. Um, not my favorite if I'm, if I'm going to be honest but um, but I didn't mind that um, and again it's one of those things that when results are going for you players are getting played out of position it's no one sees it as a bad thing but when, when results aren't going well and, and players are getting played out of position it's sort of it, people start asking the question why but, but for me personally getting played out of position would a compliment because it showed that the manager's got the confidence in your ability that you can adapt to different uh, to different roles and and do that, and I didn't mind that. I was willing to do uh, um, anything that was needed for the team, so yeah. I, I didn't mind being played out of position. I did find that yes, um, that the time that I was there, there were a number of us getting getting moved around, changing positions. Uh, but as I said, I saw that as a, as a positive. Um, like I say, it's it's a compliment when you get asked to play a different role because. Um, it, it shows the, the trust that the manager's got in you, you and your ability. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, obviously, next question. Your family had a history in um, rugby league. How did you become? How did you come to become a footballer? Um, to be honest, my, my dad, like to say, my granddad was the better out of the two. He, he played at the, the highest level. My dad played at a decent level in um, in rugby as well. But he always had a passion for football. Mm. Um, we just rugby were the were the, the thing that he did more more so because we we're, we're from a rugby town. Everybody, see, it's a lot easier to sort of get into to playing professional and all that kind of stuff from for where we are. But my dad was always really passionate um, about football more so than than rugby. And and for me, um, ever from ever since being a kid, I, I would never get in a rugby ball put in my hand. I would always get in a football put on my feet, and and that was just my dad would just instill in that into me and it would just rugby was something I played at school but that's as as far as it it went um and like I said the the passion from from my dad in terms of football uh rubbed off and and I just went from there because I I know that that football is something that my dad would have loved to have done but there there weren't as many opportunities back then um plus he weren't good enough so (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, but basically him. He, he, despite him being uh, a rugby player, he he had a passion for football and and just led me down the down the football route. Yeah, thank you. It was lucky, lucky he did in the end, wasn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Very thankful to him. Very thankful to him. I uh, I do owe him a lot for for the career that I had. Yeah, definitely. Uh, question nine. Uh, you left me all five years ago now. Um, would you have liked to stay at the club longer? Yes, is a simple answer to that. I. Uh, I, I, I try not to regret things in life, but I do. There, there is a part of me that regrets leaving Millwall. Um, I think at the time, I, I possibly would have made the same uh, the, the same decision um, unless I knew the outcome. I, I left Millwall um, for a number of different reasons. I've been away uh, from my family. We'd, we'd uh, got a young family at the time. I'd, I'd got a couple of little girls um, that, were, that were babies at the time and we wanted to be back closer to family. We'd, I'd been away, like I say, with Bristol before Millwall and then, then living away. And as much as I love both those two places, uh, in terms of places to live, um, 
I am a I am a family man. Um, and like, like to want to be back close to to home, back close to to friends and family. So that was one of the the, the biggest deciding factors in that. Um, uh, and I had like say a, a decent offer to to go to Sheffield United at the time, which which got me back home. Um, in hindsight, it, it turned out to be a really bad decision career-wise because I didn't have a good season there that season. Um, I didn't adjust uh, well at all um, to, to go into Sheffield. Um, and I didn't get much of a chance to, to, to make that up after after going there and, and, there and having one poor season. I, I didn't get a chance to, to do that. So I, I do... I, the, the, there is a big part of it that just wishes I would have stayed down in Millwall and... Um, and fought to get um, to get back out of League One and back into the Championship. Um, but as I say, the, the, the family decision was um, was the deciding factor for me. But there is a big part of me that just wishes I would have stayed down there because Millwall was a club that I, I probably um, I, I had some good times at a, a number of the different clubs I played for. Um, but Millwall were one that that if I had to probably pick, it would be. Um, it'd probably be the one that I would I would go back to and um, and, and stay for a little bit longer if, if I had the opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, last question: um, What do you make of the current Millwall team, and do you think uh, we could sneak into the playoffs this year? They they put themselves in a good position. Um, they they're, they're there or thereabouts, touching distance. Um, it, it's it's a weird one now because it's it's how people have been looking after themselves. Um, while they've sort of not had the coaches and the, the trainers and all that, while they've been in lockdown, and th- there's there's that will play a, a really big factor, and it's it's how quickly um, they can get back into things and, and fire things back up. But I, I think they've put themselves in a great position. I think you've got a good team there now. Yeah. Um, it's good to see um, a couple of the players that are, that are still there from from my time. Um, there's obviously Shawnee Williams and, and Aiden and O'Brien um, doing really well but the, the the big one for me that I'm really delighted that he's, he's kicked on and done, done really well is, is Ben Thompson I think yeah. I'm really pleased to see him doing ever so well he's, he's Millwall through and through you've got a great lad and a great player there um, and I'm delighted to see him doing well but yeah I think I think you've got a chance. I think you've, like I say, it, it's it's a tough one to call because there's there's form is totally out the window now. It's just kind of starting back up, and it's it's whoever can get back into the stride as quickly as possible. And and like I say, the the what is it? Just a point outside the playoffs or something? I think yeah, it is. Yeah, two points. Yeah. Um, so like I say, you, you've got everything to play for. Um, uh, how many games is left now? Uh, nine. I've lost track. Uh, nine, nine games. Nine games. So there's plenty to go. There's, and as I say, it's just it's going to be the team out of that little group that's there together. That's uh, whoever's the quickest to to gather the momentum, momentum and finish the season off off well. But I, I wish you all the best. I really hope that that they do um, sneak into those playoffs. And then, like I say, it's anybody's game. Then the, the playoffs are such a, a lottery at times. So um, as I say, fingers crossed that. Um, that you get in there I'd, I'd love to see it I'd love to see it and that just about concludes so thank you for your time Martin and I hope my viewers enjoyed this as much as I did and um, I'll let you get on with the day and uh, have a re- uh, good luck for the future no problem all the best to yourself all the best hope the Millwall fans are looking after themselves and thank you very much for inviting me on thank you Martin thank you I appreciate it pleasure thank you thank you Martin thank you bye bye